Okay, so this is video number two in the how to avoid online dating scammers um, and also narcissists. I guess they're probably kind of one and the same. I'll do another video on specifically online dating narcissists who aren't particularly scammers, okay? So this one's more about just how to avoid online dating scammers. So there's 15 red flags in all. First one is poor grammar, spelling, or strange word choice. Now, um, you know, a lot of these scammers, they're operating from overseas. They have whole internet cafes. I saw this Dateline episode on it. It was really wild. They have these internet cafes where these people, it's like their job. Like, like they go to work to be an internet scammer and they sit down and there's rows of, you know, 20 people in each row and they all have their computer monitor and they're chatting with, you know, um, dozens if not hundreds of people an hour. It's crazy. Like the sheer volume that these people do. So, um, because they're overseas, you know, English isn't their first language, their grammar, their spelling, their word choice is going to seem off to us. So some t some telltale signs of this would be words like greetings or hello dear or dearest or um, maybe not using contractions. So they might not use words like I'm, they might use I am or isn't, they will use is not. And that's because when English is generally taught as a second language, it's more formal English is taught. They don't teach really contractions or, or slang as much. So they're not going to use slang. That would be another sign. Uh, let's see. Number two, their profile doesn't have much on it. Okay. So again, this is, it's a numbers game for them, right? So they're trying to appeal to the, the vast majority of people out there. Um, because they're catching on, I think, to the fact that we're catching on, that there are a lot of scammers out there. They don't really want to write too much because their, their poor English is going to give them away. So it might be just a couple of sentences, um, but what they generally do touch on in their scams is going to be some sort of pity ploy. They might put in there that they are a widow or a widower, um, that they are in the military, or that they have... Uh, a good profession. They might refer to themselves, I saw this one uh, recently, that they are a professional engineer, which I guess compared to all of the unprofessional engineers out there. But they're going to give you this, uh, this sense of that they are a solid, stable, good-looking person, right? That's the vibe of their profile. Their profile might have three or four pictures on it, um, probably not a lot more. The, the scammers that tend to target men the female photos that are up tend to be very sexy and um, tend to be, you know, like a 23-year-old bikini model. Whereas the photos that are targeting women, the guy either seems very dashing and handsome or he seems, you know, big and buff, like this, you know, rugged military dude. They kind of put these different, like, archetypes of, like, the ideal woman or the ideal man on their site. So pay attention to that. There's, okay, so red flag number three, there's a portrayal of success, heroism, or great beauty. Again, this is kind of what I was just talking about with red flag number two. So they're going to talk about um, possibly being, you know, maybe they're this engineer. But the, this here's the weird thing is they can't just be like a regular engineer. They've got to have, um, they, they have their own company. And they um, are very prestigious. And they have this job lined up through the ambassador of Paraguay. <laughs> that, like, that's that's why they're there and they were you know handpicked to do this because they are such a professional engineer apparently um, military service again they're generally not you know kind of uh, your low-ranking military person they're gonna portray themselves as being of a decent rank but if you ask them they're not gonna know like the different ranks so that would be kind of a way to to flush them out too is just you know if they're talking like they're in the Air Force and they're using you know um, the different ranks that are maybe in the army you know they don't I don't know if they have caught on that our military service has different ranks for different branches of the service but regardless it's, they're always going to be, in, if they're in the military, it's some sort of like heroic branch of the military. And, um, you know, they're just incredibly brave. And of course, great beauty speaks for itself. So number four, something seems off. So if you've been chatting with them, even for a couple days, you probably have noticed that they are just sending you a ton of communication, like right away. They're emailing you all the time. They, they immediately, you know, they want to start chatting with you. Um, they just seem so incredibly interested and infatuated with you, even though 
you know, maybe you've only told them kind of just a few things about your life, but they just, um, it just seems too good to be true. Like something seems off. It's probably the, the strange language. It's probably the amount of emails that you're getting. It's them wanting to spend hours texting and, and talking with you. So pay attention to that. If your gut instinct or your spidey sense is going off, then something's off. Red flag number five, they wanna get you off the site. Well, because online dating sites don't tolerate fraudulent behavior. So they would cancel their account if they were caught. They know this, they can't have this happen because they're investing you know, money to, to put these profiles on. So they're gonna to wanna to get you into some sort of chat like Yahoo, um, Messenger, um, maybe is AOL even still around? I don't know, but you know, some sort of like text message kind of um, communication. Notice that they are not gonna wanna do Skype. They're not gonna wanna do FaceTime. They're not gonna wanna do any of these visual chats, which is very, very strange. There's absolutely no reason in the year 2015 that a person would not want to do a face-to-face -face chat. That absolutely makes zero sense. If they really are this, you know, million dollar entrepreneur and or this, um, you know, military person, people have access to video cameras. And if they're saying, well, they're in the military and they can't, you know, they, they don't have access because their computer's down, I guarantee you, my ex-husband was in the military, okay? I guarantee you that the guy in the next bunk has a computer with a camera. Like that is so common that, um, People don't, people don't go overseas really without a computer with a camera. So um, yeah, just know that. <laughs> so they're gonna wanna get you off the site. Number six, there's gonna be some sort of geographic challenge. So maybe on their profile, they were saying that they're originally from Iowa or wherever. And now because they're this you know multi-million dollar entrepreneur, they have to go sell this business they have in Paraguay. And, um, you know, it's gonna be like, you know, it's a $30 million business and they're gonna be back in about two to three weeks. Or that they are in the military, but they're retiring or they're getting out in about two to three weeks. It's always about two to three weeks. And I think the mat, that is about, that must be, well, you know what though? Okay, I, I have figured it out. From my experience, dating narcissists, I've dated two covert narcissists, it's about the two to three week point that really works. Like at about the three, end of the third week, victims are tend to be hooked. And it's all of this, um, you know, this attention that they're giving. They do a really good, good job of, of hooking you within that amount of time. And for them, it's because at about that point, they're gonna be hitting you up for money. So they know that we know to not send money to people that we don't know that are, especially if they're overseas, like that sounds crazy. I don't think in this day and age, anybody out there, um, you know, <laughs> that people know enough to not get, to not send money to people overseas, right? Um, especially how like public and he's, Dr. Phil talks about all these scam artists and stuff. So it's not so underground as it used to be, but, uh, but you will send money to somebody that you think might be your fiance or might be a very serious boyfriend. So they, they know they have about a 10 day window there to really get you to believe that this relationship has, is going to lead to whatever you want it to lead to either being a very, very serious boyfriend or to, to being a husband. Okay. Um, but yes, they're always stuck overseas for some sort of strange reason. Number seven is charming and love bombing. So love bombing, it's constant communication, it's constant compliments. This is a trick that con artists, narcissists, um, different antisocials like sociopaths, psychopaths, and cults use. And it's basically constant communication and constant compliments. And they will want to talk to you more and more and more as time, very quickly as time progresses. So you might find yourself getting, you know, three, four, five, 25 or so emails from these people. They're wanting to chat with you all the time. They're setting up times for you to chat with them. Um, they're getting upset if you're not there. The victims are tend to interpret this as, wow, they really care. We really are in this relationship. I mean, he got really upset with me because I couldn't chat last night. Well, no, he didn't, they don't care. Like, obviously they don't care, right? It's an internet cafe. You're like number 417 that day. Um, but they know that it, the more distance you're putting between you and them, the less um, kind of hypnotic effect they can have on you. 
in order to run their scam, they have to lure you in. They have, they only have those, you know, 10 days or so to convince you that they're the love of your life. So they really need as much of your time as possible to, to get that done. Okay, red flag number eight, they have an accent. So again, they might say that they're living in Michigan, right? But they're this like million dollar, whatever, this amazing person who's overseas. But then they might, you, you know, you might end up talking to them over the phone and then you realize they have an accent. Well, that doesn't add up, right? But then they might say, well, they, they lived abroad or they were born in Sweden or they went to the University of London. I've heard that one a lot lately. Or they spent some time overseas for some sort of reason. And then that ex that's supposed to explain their accent. So if somebody has an accent, that's a red flag. Number nine is mirroring. So during this love bombing stage, they're gathering all of this information about you. They wanna hear everything about you. They wanna hear everything about your children. They wanna hear everything about your hopes and your dreams and your fears and just everything. They find you to be absolutely fascinating. But if you notice, they really don't wanna talk about themselves. And that's because, of course, they are a con artist and they don't really have a self. It's just like a narcissist. It's just that mask that they are wearing to get what they want, which in this case is money. But they're gathering all of this, like, ugh, my nose it just. They're gathering all of this the concept of what you're wanting in the perfect life and in the perfect person. And then they're going to mirror or, like, reflect this back to you, Right. And so it, for the victim, it creates this, this sense of a soulmate connection. Like, oh my God, this person is so perfect for me. Everything I want and I'm about and my beliefs and my values and my morals are the same with them too. That's so crazy. We have this just undeniable connection. But realize again, it's all manufactured. Number 10, future faking. This kind of goes hand in hand with mirroring. So they're gathering all this information with you, from you, they're mirroring it back, and then they're faking this ideal future. So let's say you're a single mom and you really wanna find somebody, obviously that probably loves kids, right? Let's say you have three kids. Well, they're gonna, they're gonna talk, they're probably, you're gonna have talked about that, and then they're gonna say that they really love being a father, um, that they, you know, if they had their way, they would have, you know, a ton more kids, and. Um, they're just going to go on and on and on about how, how that would be so fantastic if they could have that in their life. And it's really, it's whatever you want, right? So if you wanted to have a llama farm in Peru, they're probably going to talk about how that would be fantastic as well. If you were, let's say if you were even, um, disabled, I, and I've heard this before too, or you, you, you're sick or you have kind of limited mobility, then they're going to say, well, they have, um, this happened to a friend of mine. She had said that, um, you know, she has um, has this health condition, she can't really do a whole lot. And they had, the scammer had told her, you know, he was raised that you take care of the person that you love. And was totally content to, even though he loved to go out and about and do things, um, but he would be totally okay with staying home and taking care of her. So it's whatever she needed, he was there for her. Number 11, rushing intimacy. This is, you know, they have about a 10 day span in order to get you to fall in love with them, right? And to believe that there's this serious relationship that's happening between you two. And that's why they're rushing intimacy. That's probably why you're feeling like something's off. Number 12, you start questioning yourself, okay? So they're gonna start rushing intimacy. They're gonna start talking about how they wanna fly into the airport in your town and how they wanna spend the weekend with you and how you're the love of their life. They've never met anybody like this. They're gonna go, they might even start sending you um, uh, you know, a flower. My friend got a, a, a long stem red rose in the mail. She got some chocolate. Um, they might start sending you small gifts. So that you might start thinking, well, this is legit because scammers don't send gifts, right? Wrong. They do. Um, if you're questioning yourself, if you're asking your friends what they think about it, if you're Googling it, then that's a red flag. Number 13, some sort of disaster strikes. So it's always about this, when they're supposed to come home, right? This two to three week point that they're in the hospital, they've been kidnapped, they've somehow run out of money, they're stuck somewhere and they need you to send them money, which is red flag number 14. They're gonna ask you for money. So anybody that asks you for money, especially if they're from overseas, it is a hands down scam. Last red flag, you can't find anything about them online. This is the year 2015, like 99.95% of the people out there have some sort of online presence. There's Facebook, there's Twitter, there's YouTube, there's Pinterest, there's something. So if there's nothing about them online, odds are they are not a legitimate person. 
So this next video, I'm going to go over the different ways you can really determine if you are dating a scammer and what you can do about it. Okay, I'll see you soon. Thanks.